Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again, and welcome to The Roads with Bo. Today, uh, we're just going to do a few real quick questions for Thursday, because I know y'all like to have something at this point in time, and I'm going to try to save my voice, at least try to make it to the weekend. I'll go ahead and tell you now, uh, you may not get all four videos this weekend, um, because my voice is... It, it is strained, <laughs> probably a little bit more than y'all you know, might be able to tell. Okay, so we just have three questions, but they all seemed uh, they all seemed like questions that probably need a little bit of context. One of them in particular, I, I think you may need before before Monday. Okay, the first one. I've watched you for four or five years, and I can only remember you doing calls to action to appeal to representatives two or three times. When you said there were links to contact our reps below, I knew you thought it was serious. I have a question, though. I've seen some people saying that it won't be that bad. What exactly about the report makes you certain it will be more than a few hundred? A few hundred is bad. I'm just wondering what your thought process is. Now, this is in reference the food situation, the aid situation in, uh, in Gaza. Okay, I've seen some people saying it won't be that bad. They're wrong. They're wrong. My guess is that it's already as bad as they think it's going to get. They just haven't seen it yet. Uh, what exactly about the report makes you certain it will be more than a few hundred? Again, I, I believe it's already a few hundred. But what you have in that report is the idea that uh, more than 200,000, I think 210,000, are already in catastrophic conditions as far as food. So that information combined with the rule of threes. Three minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks without food. And I remember, the three weeks without food assumes that you have the water. And it does not appear that they have enough of that. Um, if the aid situation does not change, and they can't really start getting aid in to that particular area, it is going to spiral. There's no way it can't. They have to get the aid in. The fastest way to do that is to open it up and get the, get the trucks in, uh, just like the person from the World Food Program said. They need full and immediate and unfettered, or whatever, uh, whatever the terminology was, access to the north. That's what, that's what it's going to take. Uh, and I, I don't, I don't see another way around that. The World Central Kitchen, they're doing what they can. The airdrops are doing what they can, but that's not enough. Not when the situation has progressed to what that report says. I don't have any reason to doubt that report. I don't have any reason to second guess those numbers. So if the aid situation does not change in the next month, it, it it's going to be bad. What way worse than a few hundred. Um and yeah, you're right. I, I don't do calls to action. I put out information, and, and I believe that people should lead themselves and, and do what they feel is right with that information. Um, if it's something where I think it can move the needle, then yeah. And in this case, I, I do believe that it might help. It might help get things open. It might put a little bit more pressure. Getting that food in there matters. Um, 
can you explain whether the clans of Gaza will confront Hamas, help with aid, be a substitute government? Okay. Um, This is the information I think you're probably going to need before this weekend because there's already been there's already been some movement here. If you don't know, inside Gaza, there's... See, that term has such a, a negative connotation in the United States. Kin. Like in Appalachia. Uh, there's networks of... Family networks, for lack of a better term. It's not exactly that, but close enough. And they're big, and they have power. Um, Will they confront Hamas? There are skirmishes. There there are intense situations that develop with these various networks and and Hamas. That not just is it going to happen in the future, it's already happened in the past. In fact, there was a a dust-up... sometime in the last week or so, maybe two weeks. That occurs. Are they going to confront Hamas in in an attempt to remove them? No. It's not what they're for. Will they help with aid? Yeah, probably. Probably. As long as that aid does not require them to cooperate directly with Israel. That's kind of a line they won't Well, in the North they might because of the situation. But generally speaking, that is not a line they cross. Um, Will they be a substitute government? No, and they have no interest in that. That's not what they are. Um, They are more about taking care of their own, their their networks, their people. They're, They're not about being administrators. They have their own kind of, I don't know if you want to call it a law, but their their own culture, um, even with how they interact with the other networks. Um, you know, because sometimes they, they go at each other occasionally as well. They are not something that would be used as a substitute for a government. And I would hope that the West understands that if they were attempt, if they were to attempt to do that, it would be perceived as an incredibly cynical method of dividing them, and it would, I, I believe, it would provoke a backlash. Um, I don't. That is not what they are. It's not what they want to do. It, it would be crossing lines that they don't cross. Um, Even those that are not in favor of Hamas, and there are some, the lines extend beyond that. It's not because they're not, I mean, they are political, um, but not in that way. Their, Their primary function is the preservation of their own. Um. Would they help with aid? Yeah. In fact, I think they are. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's already occurring um, to some degree, and they may even do it more. It would not It would not surprise me if some of the, the NGOs, the non-government organizations, actually used them because they have their own they have their own arms if they use them to secure stuff while it's being moved into certain areas. Um, And that might be a a decent move there as long as it's not with Western entities. As long as it's not something that could be perceived as collaborating with Israel or collaborating with the United States. Um... Uh, they would probably be very open to that, especially if it's them moving it into their area. Um, And, yeah, and I don't foresee a confrontation with Hamas. 
this is something that's probably going to come into play over the next five or six days in a big way as they try to really start figuring out alternatives for getting food in. Um, yeah, I can see them helping with aid, not a substitute, not going to confront. Um, but again, not confront is they're not going to confront on behalf of the West. They may confront on their own terms, but but not for anybody else. And I, in any attempt to use them in that way, I, I think it would backfire in a big way. That's not what they are. And then the the third question, I know you like AP, and I've grown to like them too. I was wondering if you think they'll make it after USA Today stopped using them. Okay, so AP, the Associated Press. A couple of publishers that have a whole lot of outlets have decided to stop using their service. And this has prompted a whole lot of conversation and rumors and stuff like that. Will AP make it? Yeah, yeah. The Associated Press, they're, they're a, it is a renowned organization. Like, they get a Pulitzer almost every year. They got an Academy Award this year for a documentary. They've been around a really, really long time. They have access to a lot of good information, and they use it. They saw the trends early when it came to newspapers, and they adjusted. There was a time when if the AP lost a whole bunch of outlets at once, yeah, it would be a big financial hit. Uh, from what I understand, if they lost every single newspaper in the United States, it would account for less than 15% of their revenue. So it, it's that's not where they make their money anymore. They have other services that they provide. Um, and if you're worried about still being able to access their content, you can get it from apnews.com.org. AP News, um, and it, it's 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 just an advertiser based news outlet. Um, so yeah, I definitely think they'll make it. There's also a part of me that believes this is actually part of a negotiation thing because the contract with these publishers is it's not expired. It's coming up on being expired. And I think this may be a way for those publishers to position to pay less because some of them are not doing well economically. Um, some of the outlets aren't. So it may be that. Or what they said is true, and they want to invest in their own newsrooms, which, I mean, that can't be bad, you know, if they're going to actually start and bring back the the old school newsroom that would probably be very helpful uh, but AP will be fine it'll be around that's that's not a worry um, yeah they uh, they're a global organization they have a lot of information so um, yeah so there we go a little more information, a little more context, and having the right information will make all the difference. Y'all have a good day.